So say one player starts on an elf, both players start on a mana creature. Maybe something like an early Mizium Mortars or an early Domery Rod can really turn the tides. That will, will let one player get to Thunder Maw Hellkite before the other one. Um, other than that, I think it probably just comes down to, you know, that largest creature. I think cards like Thunder Maw Hellkite are very, will be very important in the matchup. Yeah, it, it is, it's tricky because neither player has access to a ton of removal, so with 29 and 30 mana sources in their decks, in all likelihood they'll both have 20 resources to work with, and then it'll just be who has one more fatty, or who has a game-winning advantage, like being able to overload a Mizium Mortars just to sweep the board, or if somehow you manage to ride a downward Rade for a few turns. Uh, it's unlikely that Rade will live very long, but um, interestingly, the lower seed has won every single match in this top eight, right, all so the way up to the finals. So that would favor Jacob Toby here. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we're seeing uh, identical turn one plays from both players, for the most part. Yep, so both play Stomping Ground into Mana Creature, uh, so, both, so both at 18. We see, it looks like a pair of Volcanic Strengths in A-Bear's opener, so both of those main decked ones he's going to have access to. Yeah, particularly effective against this turn one Stomping Ground. The question is, what to put the pants on? Right, <laughs> I mean, how aggressive is it? Are we so aggressive that, you know, it's Volcanic Strength on Elvish Mystic? Uh, um, unlikely. Right, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Mystic's gonna swing for one, A Bear's gonna go ahead and play another Stomping Ground, and then play a post-combat uh, second Elvish Mystic. So, Toby, uh, looks like he's got lots of good options. Um, he's got more land. He's gonna have to take damage for it though. But he's got Flint of Boars. He's got Diamond Rade. He's got Hell Riders. He's got Gore Clan Rampager as well. Yeah, he's got all kinds of all kinds of good options. He, what he doesn't have is a fourth mana though. Right. So he's gonna have to set his turn up in such a way to give himself the uh, the best chances for in the event that you know. First, what gives me the best chances if I do draw land, and what gives me the best chances if I don't? Like those are the kind of two possible different games we might end up playing here. So he's going to go ahead and shock for another stomping ground, and it looks like he's going to go straight for a flint of four, give it haste, and crash in. Um, That's pretty aggressive for a guy who doesn't have a fourth land. Yeah, he does have a second flint of four, so even if he doesn't hit the land, he has another, you know, he's not going to run out of plays by any means. Sure. But, so both players now at 15. Abear has the fifth mana he's source here. He's going to get into Tuesday, right? Well, if Abear has a thunder maw, it's going to be pretty hard for Toby to answer one. And we oh, see it's a Hellrider. Okay. Hellrider. And because Toby's tapped out, A Bear's gonna get that, get the situation where you get to attack more than once with Hellrider. Uh, this is a swing for six after the two points from Hellrider. Yeah, like it definitely seemed like it's a little bit of a hasty time to be aggressive for Toby. Like there's just too many haste creatures that A Bear could have. Yeah, and what I was thinking about that is, you know, Hellrider. A lot of times you play it kind of in a sense where you expect it to attack once and then and then die you know, die on that attack. And usually that's worth it. The times where you get to attack multiple times with the Hellrider but it should be backbreaking. Yeah, I think it's going to get eaten by a Domri Rade forcing a duel. Yeah. And that's a, a pretty good move for Toby there. If he hadn't made that play, we were going to see a Volcanic Strength land on Hellrider. And that yeah, would it all would, but it would be, well, it would have been game over him instantly. Yeah. This turn. Yeah, that would, that's where yeah, it would have been a pair of Volcanic Strengths and a swing for nine. Um, so Toby n doesn't hit the next Mana Source, you know, does use most of a Domery Rod and his Flint of War to take out the Hell Rider. Now, uh, we're probably going to see a Stranger Geist, a Volcanic Strength on it, and then an Elvish Mystic attack to the Domery Rod, and four points of damage going to Toby's face. What do yeah. you think? Uh, that sounds just about right. Abir has got a. He, he knows that he has the advantage right now. He has so much more lands, he has so much more tempo. The one thing is that if this game goes on long, Abir has got to know that he probably has less resources. Wait, does he have Gore Clan Rampage in his hand? Because if he does, that's just game over. No, he's going to go ahead he Volcanic Strength, the Elvish Mystic. Interesting. So he's going to swing for five. He may, I don't even think, I think he just put all five on, on Toby, not even caring about Domri. Domri can only plus right now, and that that's not... Uh, and the theory is that you can put Volcanic Strength in the Stranger Geist next turn. Right. For four more anyway, so, yeah. And I like that. That's actually like a very smart play. play. A very, very, very good play by Aber. So Toby does hit the fourth land here. He's going to go ahead and plus Domri Rod, doesn't find something. Um, at four life, and this with this volcanic strength, Elvish Mystic, he's hard pressed. All right, scavenging is that's the one card he could have to, to try to do something here, but it's not going to be enough against volcanic strength. Yeah, so there is that second volcanic strength in Avery's hand. Uh, scavenging news does give Toby the potential to have six life here, and it looks like Avery's going to go ahead and throw that second volcanic strength on Stranger Root Geist, swinging for Play. seven, and we are on to game two. Excellent play by Avery. That was, that was definitely a smart play. 
Well, as we said, um, both players have access to uh, Flames of the Blood Hand, uh, Pillar of Flame, um, Garuk Pyromancer. Actually, Garuk Relentless uh, is one of the cards that the Abir had cut to make room for uh, for Fog, and uh, so that that gives one extra weapon to Toby. Um, although it is all fun and games game one when you have your pre sideboarded cards. After sideboard, now both players will have access to a full three volcanic strengths. All right, so we're going to bring you back in the booth in the, for the finals here. So this is for we do trivia. This is going to be for one year's worth of three hundred and sixty-five days and six hours of premium, right? Roughly about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give or take uh, like two minutes or something. I don't think we're on a. Yeah, but it's not going to be a leap year, so three sixty-five sounds about right. Sweet. All right. So do you have a question for him? I do. And it's not even about music this time. Okay. <laughs> it's about magic. Yes. 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 Oof. All right. Uh, so we discussed uh, William Jensen quite a bit this weekend. Hall, you know, newly elected Hall of Fame uh, member William Jensen, who's been on a tear. Um, how many top eights has he made in his last four SCG Opens? How okay. many top eights has he made in his last four SCG Opens, including yesterday? Um, if you know the answer, tweet at us at SCG Live, hashtag SCG Premium. Uh, we're looking for the number of top eights that that newly elected Hall of Fame member William Jensen has made in his last four SCG Opens that he has played in. Right. Let us know, and you can get a year of premium. Uh, you know, if everything works out. Yeah. Well, we know he we know he made at least one. You know, he was in this top eight. He, he was in this jump, top eight. So. He was in this top eight. All right. That's what he does. That so is so, what he so does. if you put down zero, that's probably I, yeah. you're you know. So you want to have at least one for your answer. Yeah, and we're looking for whole numbers too, like it's no no fractions. E, e pi. Those are between one and four, not, but not, not you know. Not gonna do it here. All right. All right, we're gonna jump back into the uh, the finals. Um, the first six minutes were uh, were pretty exciting. I'm looking for another twelve minutes of right. uh, <laughs> high intensity action. So I would say what surprised me about that matchup is just how aggressive it is. It seems like both decks are almost just incapable of blocking. You know, we saw there Toby kind of with this, you know, wealth of cards. He had a mana creature into Flint of Four into Flint of Four and just just was dead really quickly. So but 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 he could have played defensively. I mean he took shock damage, he tapped his Flint of Four, he tapped his elves, he, he like at all right. points of the game he removed all of his blockers to maximize the amount of damage he could do. And with as much gas as he had in his hand but being short on mana, it seemed like Perhaps he needed to drag the game out a little bit longer. But then again, maybe he's just like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to beat a Thunder My Hellcat anyway. So. Yeah, he was never going to be able to defend the Volcanic Strengths, right? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing he could do that game, I don't think, just because um, the, uh, the, you know, being pre having your best cyborg card in the main deck is just... And drawing both copies, pretty good yeah. if you draw them both, right, absolutely. So we have to think Plus, both... being on the play, big it advantage. Seems, yeah, that seems really huge in the matchup. Absolutely. Um, so we imagine both players will max out on the Volcanic Strengths. To be sure. Um, I, what I was amazed at is originally I'd say, hey, okay, when you're playing stuff like Thundermar Hellkite, I would love to have Zealous Conscripts in this matchup, but I'm wondering if you can really side in five drops here. You know, Toby was dead before five mana really hit. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I still don't mind it just because that's a pretty big life swing if you steal a, a Thundermar Hellkite, but you got a lot of other things you got to do too, and you can't afford to be too slow, and first you need to have cards like Flames of the Firebrand and Pillar of Flame. <coughs> so you like flames in the matchup. Flames hits mana creatures. It hits a scavenging ooze that was just played. Or a Strangergeist, very importantly. Are you, are you, do you want to hit the front half of a Strangergeist with the flames? Oh, you're talking about flames of the firebrand. I thought you were talking pillar of Oh, flame. yeah, no, flames of the firebrand. Oh, uh, sometimes. I mean, it depends. Sometimes you just hit the back half for two. Right. Are you hitting an Arbor Elf for one and the flames for two? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that definitely seems good to be able to hit a second half of one. Uh, and it's one of the few ways to actually do things like uh, uh, remove some of these mana creatures. Um, now that said, it's not terribly mana efficient, but um, in my experience, Kibler has never not wanted to arc lightning somebody else's mana creature. <laughs> I mean, he was playing Simoon back in the day. You know, okay, like, that's that's what, one, one damage to each green. No, one damage to each of your opponent's creatures. It's okay. red and a green. Okay. Um, I think his one big regret from the tournament was that he didn't play four Simoons. Oh, okay. Gibbler is a guy who appreciates a mana creature and... Appreciates the opponents not having a mana yeah, creature. No yeah, It's like having moxes. 
Like you just get to have more mana than your opponent. It's not even fair. I mean, Kibler will settle for a card like Farseek and tell you to put it in every single deck if you don't have access to nice things like elves. Smart. Yeah. So we that I mean we have seen you know in these decks they're running a full six mana creatures. We actually have seen in standard some decks run up to as many as twelve one mana creatures in the elf decks. Oh yeah, I mean I've seen <laughs> I've seen Zvi build decks that have you know thirty six mana creatures. Uh, four Genesis Waves and 20 land or something, or 24 no, land. That's just the whole deck. Yeah, it's nothing but Genesis Waves and creatures <laughs> that make mana, all the way up to Primeval Titan. You know, Oracle, like when, you're, when your big creatures are Oracle of Maldai and Primeval Titan. Sure, there's literally yeah, still more land. Everything just makes more mana. Um, it's interesting, uh, William Jensen, we, had, we talked about uh, how uh, he played Jund in this event. There was an earlier tournament where, uh, when M14 just came out, where Jensen uh, actually played a caller of uh, a Garuk caller. Yeah, that, that, yeah, beast was, caller, caller of the beasts. That was the uh, the standard open in Somerset. He actually, uh, I believe, made the finals with the. There was that mono green. Well, it's actually green white, but um, mostly touch, of, touch white. of white. Mostly green elf deck. Yeah, no, de designed by Zvi actually. Mm -hmm. uh, reaching the finals, correct? Yep. Uh, what's interesting is both Chandra and Garuk. Not you know, just one month into M14's life, both making the top tables uh, of uh, of big tournaments. Yeah, pretty good showing for the new Planeswalkers out of M14. <sighs> Figure fourth time's the charm on Chandra, right? <laughs> right, what was it? Yeah, the we have Chandra Nalar, a Blaze. Yeah, not not too many. Yeah, yeah and the, the the fourth one, the the, the one the, from the, M the one that doubles spells. Yes. All right, so we've got uh, Rootbound Craig uh, as a response to Forest and Arbor Elf. All right, so Toby, not only on the play, but he actually is the only one with a mana creature. He's going to have a pretty good advantage at the beginning. Uh, a huge advantage. Plus, now he's got a turn two Domre. Yep. He I think he's just in a commanding position this game. Right, and it's interesting that we can say commanding position as early as turn two. You know, yeah, that mean, really speaks to the speed of this matchup. Yeah, I mean, he's effectively already two, like he's t three turns ahead now. Well, the Domri misses. Okay, back and, to two. Yeah, Abear is able to Pillar of Flame that Arbor Elf, so he, you know, right now the boards are pretty equal except for the Domri Rod. Well, the, and Toby isn't land ahead. Like, he hasn't right. played his land for the turn yet, but right. he is both a land ahead and just has a, a powerful Planeswalker in play up to five loyalty. Yeah, so for the second turn, the uh, Domri Rod does miss, so all Toby's able to do is play a third land and play Arbor Elf. What will be interesting to see here is whether or not Abear, where what his land situation is, he has played Rootbound Crags both turns as opposed to a basic or a fetch land. Well, part of it is he just doesn't have any spells to play. If you see his hand, he's got four more land in it. Okay. So I think he's acting like he's low on mana, but he's actually just got... Um, lands for days. So the first creature on Abear's side is Scavenging Ooze. He leaves up that third green mana to potentially eat an ar the Arbor Elf. No, sorry, Arbor Elf was pillared, so it's actually not in the yard. Right. Um, fourth land from Jacob Toby. He's going to play a Gorklan Rampager. Wow, well, it's probably going to fight with, yep, Damirati arranges a fight between Scavenging Ooze and Gorklan Rampager. Arbor Elf gets in there. See? Now at this point, Toby is effectively four turns ahead of Abear. I mean, right. There's very little that Aber is going to be able to do. It's interesting because when I was thinking of all the plays he could have made there on four or five mana, um, like Gorkland Rampager is probably the least scary. You know, it's it's less scary for certainly than a Thundermaw Hellkite than a Howl Rider. But even so, it's it's still amazing here. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, like even without the Gorkland Rampager, he was just so far behind to begin with, and now she's just getting further and further behind. Um, so it's almost like on the draw, you just have to have a mana creature. Otherwise, you know, Aber's hand, you know, had a had a one mana kill spell, had a two. But he mana couldn't threat. play it on turn one. This game would have been a very different game if he would have if he would have had one. a stopping ground to be able to play on turn one. Okay. Then he could have prevented the Dalmere from coming down in turn two, and he would have made it all the way to turn three without without being more than just one turn behind. So maybe you should you get you need to have on the draw that turn one spell, whether it's a pillar, whether it's a mana creature, just you need to do something. Yeah, I think that this may have just been too slow of a draw. Um, and we see no play, fourth land, but no play from a bear. Yeah, it's it's just getting, it's getting worse and worse. All right, Domri for the third time, and I, and so Toby's actually 0 for three on hitting with Domri pluses, but it hasn't really mattered. He's still kept a commanding lead. Well, he has both the Domri and uh, uh, one less creature on a bear's side of the table. 
All right, so we see a swing for five, and then just a second Gorklan Rampager made from Toby. Now with nine power on his side of the board, two no creatures for Abear. Uh, these 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 Dragonmaster Red Green decks are not built to play from behind. All right, we see a Volcanic Strength drawn from Abear. Not really helpful when you're behind. Not really helpful when you don't have a creature. Yeah, I think we're gonna be on our way to a quick game three. Very very shortly. Um, I mean. Avery's got Hellrider, which would just get eaten by a Gorkline Rampager. He's got uh, quite a bit of land, Volcanic Strength, as we mentioned. It looks like just two, is that, and then what's the green card? I believe it's a Strangle Root, guys. Yeah. But I'm not positive. Well, given that it's in his deck, it's not going to help him here. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot of trampling damage on the other side of the board. Avery's now, do you suppose he plays Strangle Root, guys, and then Volcanic Strength set up? So because just to have it, so, so a it guy could possibly big enough, trade. Well, a guy big enough so that if it fights, it at least... Yeah, if he has the Geist, I think, I think we're gonna, he's, he's going to want to make some sort of progress, so some sort of trade. But even then, you know, he, he's only at 14 right now, which is kind of a, a funny thing to say, but when he's facing down 9, nine damage, you know, that is a, a two-turn clock. So we see a fifth land. That's going to be a forest. He's going to... It looks like he has a Thundermaw Hellkite, which is usually good in this matchup, but once again, all the cards a lot worse from behind than they are when you're ahead. At least he can take out the Dumbarati if he wants. No, he has to block. Yeah. An unfortunate position to be in, to be sure. Yeah, I mean, with that swing there, he's he'd put himself down to five life. Um, so he's going to go ahead and instead opt for the blockers, and we see blocking will not happen, though, as Toby puts a Volcanic Strength on Gorklan Rampager, and this is just brutal. Going to fight it with the Thundermaw Hellkite. Yeah, and then go 11 to the face. <laughs> I mean, this one is... Puts Abear down to 3. Every turn when it looks like it could not get more of a brutalizing. It uh, is, uh... And does he miracle a bonfire? That wouldn't even help, actually. No, I was thinking, yeah. yeah, miracling a bonfire. I was like, no, no, wait, there's a volcanic strength on you. So here. what's that the plan doesn't... here? You play Hellrider, attack, kill Dharma Rade, then cast Fog. Yep. Untap, play another Hellrider, then cast Fog. Untap, <laughs> then play another Hellrider, <laughs> then play Fog, right? That, like, that would work, right? Because yeah. then you have triple triggers on your Howl Riders. Yeah. So we go to game three. In game three, Avery will be on the play. And as we've seen, it has been absolutely just uh, very, like, just very Being important. on the play has been really important. Yeah. Now, um, of course, both players with the better draw have happened to be on the play. Anyway, I think you do have to keep a good hand, particularly if you're on the draw, you have to have, you have your standard has to be a little bit different. You have to be willing to mulligan to, to try to get something fast enough to be able to compete because... You're not blocking. Yeah, so I want to look well. back at Abear's sideboard for a second here. Uh, what I've noticed in these games is that they've been extraordinarily fast and really hard to come back from. We talked about the possibility that Abear had boarded in fog to try to, you know, win win from an equal or maybe behind board state. What do you think about possibly him siding in Bonfire of the Damned? Even though it doesn't really... Okay, drawing one's terrible here, but, you know, because you don't really want to pay three mana to, ma to answer a mana creature. But when you do think about board states like the one we saw last game, and I you know, was thinking, okay, how can he possibly recover? You know, Bonfire is like one of the few cards that can recover from those situations. Yeah, but he is on the play this time. So okay. I think he just wants to maximize his chances of pressing his advantage, which may include a Bonfire also. It may, like, Bonfire to kill mana creatures gets much better when you're on the play, because you can potentially go land, elf, turn two, Bonfire for one. Right, and that's great time to walk. take right. their mana elf. Absolutely. So I think if he wants to bring it in, I think it's mostly because of the possibility of the time walk. But I think that the uh, the most important thing is making sure that his that he is able to present as fast and reliable of a clock as possible, because as long as he's being proactive, being on the play is just incredibly important in this matchup. It does seem like between the volcanic strengths and Chandra Pyram, if he's boarding in Chandra and you know that pillar, he wants to make sure he still has this certain density of creatures. We saw last game he had. It appeared that he had more spells than creatures. He actually wasn't. You know, he had volcanic strength. He never got to cast. He didn't have anything to cast it on. You know, it seems, it seems like there's only so many non-creature slots you have to work with. Yeah, and um, when also when you get a little bit flooded, those problems become exacerbated. Meanwhile, on Toby's side, just playing good old-fashioned Dragon Master Red Green. No real divergences beyond the uh, Gruul Guildgate phrase over the Kessig Wolf run for a slightly more consistent mana base. You know, just a tiny little bit less power, 
tiny little bit more consistency. Do you change your sideboarding plan when you know you're going to be on the draw? It's both Absolutely. games. Both games we've just seen that the person on the play has been at such a huge advantage. So, so if you're Toby here, you know how do you change your strategy? You know, knowing that you're going to be playing from behind. Um, well, first of all, if you didn't already have the the removal, the removal probably gets a little bit better. Um, but uh, beyond that, I, I mean, you don't. If you wanted the conscript game one, I don't. Or if you wanted the conscript in game two, I don't think you want it in game three. Um, Just because the conscript's a lot better from when you're ahead. It's it's slow and it's not a great way to block. You know, and I think you do have to plan on playing some amount of defense. Um, it's possible you're just supposed to be like, I'm going to be as offensive, uh, offensive as possible. I know I'm a big dog, and hopefully he stumbles a little bit, and I just punish him for it. But I think more realistically, um, you may have to do some amount of interacting. You know, I, I, I think that the more important play, though, is to just aggress, you know, mulligan much more aggressively on the draw than on the play. Because if I mean, you cannot afford to have a slow draw in this matchup on the draw. Yeah, we saw there, uh, Ruger's turn one play was Rootbound Craig tapped. And as soon as turn two, you were saying that, you know, this game is, is really almost over. Yeah, I, I mean, you're starting, like, when you're on the draw, you're starting, a, a, you know, a turn behind anyway. And so if you take turn one off to do nothing and uh, turn two you spend to kill their turn one play, you're just so far behind at that point. Particularly if they happen to, to have a three drop. And Dom and Roddy is the best possible three drop for the net spot. You yeah. know, Fuento 4 would have also been really good, but... It's interesting. So Domri Rod was so we saw from Toby, you know, his three drop was Domri, which missed all three times, and we saw, you know, his four drop. But it fought multiple times. Like sure, it, it fought twice. Of, yeah. Yeah, I think the one I'm trying to make the point of. So we saw Domri, which was overthrown hitting. We saw his four drop was just four four tramples. You know, no Hell Riders, no Thunder Maws, and still just overwhelmingly enough. It's just, you know, if you get that far ahead, it almost doesn't even matter what you're playing. It seems like every spell would have been, you know, almost lights out. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like how many clicks of tempo can you get ahead of the person, and uh, and if you can get to a spot where things like Thunder My Hellkite aren't even, you know, when with Thunder My Hellkite has to stay home, it's uh it is a tough spot to be in. All right, so we are right about to uh, to go to the finals, or to the final game. Make sure to uh, stay tuned afterwards to find out who's getting that <laughs> one year of premium. They they put a Brian Kibler token there in the middle of the table. Are they fighting for anti? Is that the <laughs> prize? Nice. Yeah, I, I, I mean, with uh, four people in the top eight, and now a finals being decided between two Dragon Master Red Greens, there's an awful lot of people uh, blaming Kibler this I would, weekend. Yeah, I would certainly say so. Oh, it, uh, we just got word from our spotter on the floor. Toby says he is channeling Kibler. He is channeling the power of Kibler. It wasn't even just, uh, you know, between the two of them. He's just making it clear right. that Kibler's okay. on his, his side. His of side of the board. Yeah, which is, he's going to need it if he's, uh, it, well, I mean, being on the play is is a pretty big advantage, but having the Dragon Master on your side might be that might an be even bigger that, one. Yeah, that, that could certainly compensate for being on the draw. Little known Brian Kibler fact for those of you uh, following at home. Brian Kibler was a an excellent wrestler in his younger in his pre like before he was just dominating the magic circuit he was actually okay. a competitive wrestler that's interesting so like at like at the high school level or the the college level wwf wwf no no okay no no, okay. no, no. <laughs> no in school in school <laughs> yeah but uh he uh you should see it every once in a while uh, it's usually not uh, unless it's like a you know late on a Saturday night when people or a Sunday night after a pro tour and people are going out celebrating you know like after one of his wins or something but uh, every once in a while you know you'll be out at the bar maybe people get a little bit rowdy uh, just take, think, well, takes them down well no 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 things start to go a little sour and you find out real quick you know like the local thugs are like Ugh. and you find out real quick which of the magic players used to be you know competitive fighters and wrestlers and sure, which of the magic you know. players were um, a little bit more uh, not competitive so, fighters. So you, that, you say that plural, like, like like there are many magic players who are competitive fighters and wrestlers. You would be surprised, my friend. All right, so we're going to game three. We've got uh, two red green decks, both looking to have good curves coming out. I think. I mean, is there anything as important as having a green source untapped and a, a mana creature in turn one if you're on the play? I mean, it's 
I, w I would say, no, you want to make sure you have a one drop. I, Pillar of Flame, I suppose, is good, but no, the mana creature just seems like. And you can't the mulligan best. every hand that doesn't have it, though, because, I mean, there's you only, only have six. six right. right. But if you don't have it, you're going to need to have a good turn two plan. See. And this is a deck that can mulligan well. It doesn't need all its cards. Like, we've seen lots and lots of games, it just ends up with cards in its hand and never gets to use Yeah, it doesn't have time to cast them all. Yeah, it's more important to have a good draw than to have a quantity of draws. You see, A Bear keeping on seven. Uh oh. That was a snap keep. And Toby wisely Toby taking a mulligan. He doesn't see a hand fast enough to size, you know what? It just, it's a mathematical mulligan. Right. That's my favorite kind. I always love that when people justify their decisions to either keep or, or mulligan by it's, yeah, it's a mathematical keep or it's a mathematical mulligan. Okay, so you're, so <laughs> describe <laughs> to me what you mean by a mathematical mulligan. I, I don't think they could. Okay. <laughs> a what you think that, that I think a mathematical keep is like um, it's when now it's supposed to be when it's one of those things where you don't know if you're supposed to keep it or not until you do the math in your head about what it is you need to draw. You're like, okay, I think I'll have uh, uh, at least a 67% chance of winning the game. If I draw a land by turn two, I've got two and draw the odds of me doing this are this. So right. like and, you do an EV and, calculation. Right, and you compare that to, I think the odds of, if I, if I mull again from this position, I think my odds of winning are about 41% or whatever. Right. And so you're like, okay, That's actually really to? similar to how I, like, that's the way that I approach mulligans a lot. So that's yeah. that's supposed to be a mathematical keep. Really, the way that mathematical keeps work is that, uh, like, uh, that Luis Scott Vargas looks at his opening hand containing, you know, two black creatures, a, a Boros card, a Simic Guildgate, and you know, uh, and one other and a, and a mountain, and you know, says it's a mathematical, mathematical keep. keep. Okay. Just because it's, you know, just well, to taunt people that are slightly tighter. I mean, I think even with your, what you're describing, when you go through contingencies, you think you're, how likely you are to win in each contingency, and then like the odds of that happens, there's still a lot of personal bias in that, because the number there, and you say, you know, how likely am I to win if I draw this, you know, that, that still is something that people are doing a lot by feel at that point, you know, to actually like mathematically map out what are my odds to win if I draw, you know, the second red source, you know, that, that's, that's a large enough calculation that you're really doing it by feel. Yeah, and you know what? The hell with math. This is Magic the Gathering, not plenty math, math and the magic. Gathering. All right, so we see Toby keeps keeping on six very quickly, and the mana creature looks like it's going to go Toby's side. He has an Elvish Mystic Interesting. on turn so one. Interesting. So Abir even snaps off a hand with no turn one plays. So I'm guessing that we're going to see a pretty aggressive turn two and three to compensate. But Toby doing the best thing he can. He has played an uh, an Elvish Mystic. Uh, bringing him basically up to parity. Yep. String Root Geist taking uh, another little bit of an advantage for Abir, but depending on what Toby plays this turn, he could actually, you know, be slightly ahead. Yeah, it looks like Abir's kept a hand with a fairly land-heavy hand. Um, Toby, to make his red man here, is gonna have to play Stomping Ground. That drops him down to 16, but now it looks like he has the option between a lot of different cards. He has a Domery Rod and a Flint Hoof Boar available to him. Here. Yeah, I'm guessing we're seeing a Flint Hoof Boar and it attacking, because at this point, he's uh, ahead on mana. He can push his advantage. He's even got volcanic strength. Oh, wow. He decides not to attack just because he's got another mana creature. That's even better. Yeah, so what that allows him to do is if he has a fifth land next turn, he can make Domery Rod and another Flint of Four, so he can just continue. He, you know, he can flood the board as fast as possible. Absolutely. These mana creatures are just absolutely, you know, huge, but this is one of those places where if fire, Flames of the Firebrand comes down, it's going uh, to be real rough for Toby. I actually wonder... If if Avir attacked with a Strangler or Geist, do you even block? I mean, I think you have to, but then, oh no. If he actually has Flames of the Firebrand, this is going to be... All right, so we have... Yeah, if he has Flames of the Firebrand, you're so just... So that block is going to anyway. happen. He's going to go ahead and Gore Clan yeah. Rampager. It is Gore Clan Rampager, which means uh, seven, let's see, so that's... Three tramples Three over. trample, making him um, at 16? No, down 13. to 13, yeah, he actually has taken, he took two off the Strangle Geist and right. two off his own Shockland, so now he's down to 13 on that swing. Yeah, I, I don't love blocking in this matchup anyway, but it's just so hard to, uh, to have it ever work out well. Right. However, Toby, with two mana creatures, uh, has a sizable mana advantage. All right, so he's going to go with Scavenging Ooze here. Uh, and right now we have just Wait. one creature in the graveyard, but that does help in the situation. It certainly helps deal with Strangle Root Geist. 
Yeah, I think you got to keep all your mana uh, untapped if you're if you're Toby. You're going to use two of it to eat the two creatures in the graveyard already, but you want to have the third one ready to threaten the Strangergeist. Right. Plus, the extra point of damage doesn't mean nearly as much as just perhaps, you know, like if something happens uh, to one of your blockers, if you get Flames of the Fire branded or whatever, it'd be nice to just be able to make one more counter this turn. What's interesting with, with um, scavenging using this matchup is that outside of a channeled Gore Clan or Blood Rush to Gore Clan Rampager, it's really hard for either deck to actually remove a, a scavenging use once it hits the 4 4 size. Yeah, I mean, at that point. Well, 4-4, four, four, it can still be mortars, mortars. but once it five, gets five. up to 5, then, yeah. then you're stuck pretty much just uh, using Domre Rade or, or Chandra Pyromancer to remove it as a blocker, um, or trying to go over the top with, uh, with the Gorkline Rampager, as you said. So we see, as you said there, the, then the Mizium Mortars on Scavenging Ooze. Yep, we're still going to see a quick 2-life, though. Yep, so he's going to go ahead and get both both creatures there, moving himself back up to 15. But Scavenging Ooze still hits the bin. And Toby looks like running out of threats. I believe his final two cards are a, dom are a Domri and a Volcanic Strength. So right now he doesn't actually have a quality target for those. Nope. Uh, going to have to see Domri Rade and have it hit, but... Avery knows he's down on mana, however, he does have better threats, yep. so he hit, this is this is definitely a game that could go either way, um, although Avery does have the advantage right now. Yeah, so you see Avery there swings with Strangoot Geist, putting Toby down to 13, and then uses his remaining mana to make a flint of a 4. No, oh, Gorklan Rampager. Alright, so Gorklan now gives Toby the largest creature on the battlefield. But just one more land. As soon as Avery finds his fifth land, he's got that Thundermall waiting in the wings. Yeah, this turn his draw was a Flint of Four, so he's not there yet. I believe it looks like he also has a Hellrider. Yep. Is this going to be one of those times where you see just Hellrider go? Or do you think he I'm, sends with a Strangle Root? I, I think, I mean, you might send Strangle, Strangle Root in that situation. I mean, I think it's either Hellrider go or Hellrider send Strangle Root. Either way, he's. I mean, he's got to set up like what. What make, What gives him the better turn next turn? If like, for instance, if he draws the fifth land so that he has Thundermaw Hellkite, um, then uh, if he, you know, if he has everybody in play. Yeah. So it's Hellrider go. What this does is it puts a lot of pressure. Even though Toby can do things like play a volcanic strength, on. It, it's going to be Domerati for sure, right? Like we're clearly going to got to eat the Hellrider. Yeah, you can't. He can't leave the Hellrider in play because if the Hellrider's in play, basically Toby just can't attack. There's too much damage facing down on the other side of the board. Yeah, and he, you know, like a second Hellrider makes, the, you know, could be. Potentially just devastating. All right, so all the cards in his hand out. Toby's gonna go ahead and volcanic strength the Gore Clan Rampager. He plays Domri Rod. Domri will make the Gore Clan Rampager fight the Hellrider. And it looks like he's gonna go ahead and crash. Now he's debating whether or not he wants to swing in for six here. Yeah, because if he doesn't swing, then he can actually uh, threaten to eat the Flint Hoof Four on defense and has Domri Rod uh, protected. Right, and he's gonna go ahead and do that. He's gonna play the, the control the blocker. Red green control, baby. Does Aber hit that fifth land? He has drawn Fog. Ooh. See, this is Fog is a cruel, cruel mistress. This is the price yeah. you pay when you play these situational cards. <laughs> sometimes you draw it, and sometimes it's not good. Um, Aber, right now, without a good attack, he still doesn't have that Thundermon. Actually, he's in this precarious spot where, well, when he plays Thundermon, the first Thundermon may have to just attack down Domirod. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to get killed by Gorklan Rampager. Yep. A commanding position by Toby. Um, I mean, at this point, what's what's a guy to do? Well, How's he going to get out of this? Well, he still does have... He still can cast Thundermaw next turn. And if he, if he draws the land for it. And that still could be enough. Remember, he it does have the life point advantage right now. So what do you think about uh, Gorklan Rampager? Is there some chance that Gorkland Rampager is going to make next turn exciting for Abear if he draws one. So the idea being he can just swing kill the. Uh, I mean, his dream is to get rid of that volcanic strength Gorkland Rampager. Somehow. Exactly. And that's probably the most effective way he has to do that, right? It's to use his own Gorkland. Yeah, if he draws his own Gorkland Rampager, he can really force Toby into blocking. Um, you know, Toby's life total is low enough where he can't just he can't just take damage. You see Flint of Four from Abear. 
Oh, this is exciting. The fourth haste. He's going to go yes. ahead. All right, he's just going to crash in. Exciting. I like this play a lot, actually. It means he's really playing into the, the chance that he draws that fifth land. So he attacks, that's actually attacked Domri Rod with all of those. So not Wait, Toby. Wow. Wow. Yeah, because if you would have attacked with, at least you Toby would Toby be at eight, eight, which gives him outs. But, yeah. um, because then you could potentially kill him with it. I guess he wants to make sure that the Domri Rod is off the table so that Thunder My Hawkeye right. can actually potentially win. Yeah, I think he wants to get that get rid of that possibility for Domri to make the two fight. Well, definitely a good spot for Toby. Do you think at this point he can start attacking? I mean, well, he's, he needs the, a Gorkman you know, to block with, right? Yeah, that's it. And I kind of, this is why I like A-Bear's line, is that if he wants to see a more drawn-out game, well, he doesn't want to have Domri stick around, because Domri will draw Toby extra cards. And while well, you know Toby has the best creature around here, you're right that it's kind of, it's not sure that certain that Toby actually can attack with it. But he's going to wow. go ahead and all in on it. Second Volcanic Strength There's on eight. Volcan Rampage. I wonder, I wonder, do you think... It, is it possible that you want to put Volcanic Strength on, on a mana creature? Creatures? I was thinking the same thing. But this way, he's got a very clock. short clock. If Aber doesn't draw that land for Thunder Maw, um, he's not going to win the race anymore. I wonder about not attacking with the two mana creatures, too. Put him at 10. Yeah. Make it, you know, threaten lethal next turn. Make him keep <laughs> somebody home. Um, that seems like a more yeah. effective blocker than, than keeping the guys home, but... Well, it looks like the land hasn't been drawn by Abear. Remember that Abear does have that fog? Yeah, Because Toby's chosen this line now. I think the fog's going to be pretty good here. Yeah, I mean, this is... If Abear actually has the Thunder Moss soon, it, it's possible that we see fog turn into a time walk. Yeah, well, fog at least is going to be one green gain eight. Which this is this is an exciting little match here. I mean, I mean it's obviously... Oh, And there's our fifth land. He's got the fifth land. Doesn't even cost him life. So he has to wonder is, can he Thunder Maw this turn, or does he have to leave up fog? Um, if he Thundermoss, he's going to lose to something like a Gorkland Rampager. I, th I, th I, think you ha I think you have to Thundermaw. I mean, how, I think you, so how are you winning this game? All right, he's going to go ahead for Thundermaw Hellkite. Besides, like, wouldn't Toby have just played the, the Gorkland Rampager on defense if he had it? I would think so. So, no, it, I, think I mean, well, Gork well, Toby has no cards in hand. So he knows that, you know, we're talking about a Gorkland being on top of the uh, deck. Oh, okay, sure. So Aber wants to make sure, I think he wants to make sure that this is a two-turn clock. So he can, my guess that he swings the team, though that does leave him, Pillar of Flame could kill him at that point if he does. So if he swings with the team, like, I say, I don't even like blocking the Geist and the Boar. You like just blocking nothing. Well, I like, I like blocking the Boar, just the Boar. If okay, so well, you, don't want, you don't want to give him a blocker. Yes, I don't want to give him a blocker, and I want, um... To like taking two damage is better than taking three because like the Thunder Maw is going to do five and the Stringer Geist doing two is it's still only six. Right. Well, so I'm saying next turn. Yeah. Right. So and we see a Howl Rider well, as the draw for Jacob so Toby. I guess that's, I guess and that's, that's the going to be lethal. That's going to be four damage on the attack, eight damage from the unblocked Gore Clan Rampager. Mm -hmm. Looks like he'd actually need the fog. And no, that will do it. From the spot. Jacob Toby. Exciting match. Two games to one defeats Ruger A Bear and becomes. Mm -hmm. Our Star City Standard Open champion. Yeah, a very you know exciting match. Wow. All right, Dragon Master Red Green on the weekend defeating Dragon Master Red Green. Yeah, so Aber actually dies there with the fog in his hand. I think we both we both said he had to make the Thunder Maw play there. You know there are a couple draws we saw. I said Gorkland Rampager and I guess Hellrider would both kill him. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of things. A, a yeah, lot of things do. A lot of things would kill him, but like. You gotta, you gotta give yourself the best chance you actually can to uh, to win the match, you know. Yeah. None of this, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking. Like, uh, gotta just make the best decision. I suppose which... he also loses to a, a Thundermaw on that on that board. Yeah, so. I mean, there's plenty of things that it could have been, right? Like, right. Uh, Gore Clan Rampager as well as we mm -hmm. as we mentioned, you know, or Zell's conscript. But either way, Jacob Toby, SCG Salt Lake City. Uh, Saturday champion, 